salatu was salam wa la muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin wa tayyirin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ramadan kareem my goodness middle of the month now for those of you whom today is the 15th many many felicitations for the birthday of imam hassan and for those for whom it's the 16th my goodness we've just crossed the line and we're oh don't want it to end it's such a beautiful month right we've got to start off which is a that we always start off with from the sermon of the prophet where he said fasallallahu rabbakum ask your ask allah your rabb bi niyatin sadika with an absolutely truthful intention wa qulubin tahira in pure hearts six things one and you are fiqhakum li siyamihi that we are able to fast the way we should fast wa tilawati kitabi and that we're able to recite the book that we're able to do tawba because the most unfortunate is the one who's not forgiven the doors of jannah are open fourth thing we ask him never close the doors of jannah the doors of jahannam are closed ask him never to open the fifth one never open them was shaytani maghluka and shaytan is imprisoned fas alu rakkum ask your rab and la tusallit alaykum that he never frees us for us remember these six things i think it's coming out of your ears now but we're going to keep on every single day so we never forget so every kunut that's what you're asking for and so today our focus is going to be just 16 and that's from sort of in the middle part of surah al-kahf We've got Surah Maryam and then we've got Surah Taha. So we're going to look at three surahs as such. My goodness, we've got two knickknacks here. One is from Surah Taha and then we've got a hand as well. wonder what that is. Well, we'll soon find out. So let's first do the recitation of the first Ruku of Juz 16. So if you've got your Qurans, start looking at them and recite with me. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال ألم أكن لك إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال إن سألتك عن شيء بعدها فلا تساهبني قد بلغت من لدني عزرا فانتلك حتى إذا أتيا أحلى قرية أريا كرنية استع تتعا ما أحلها فعابوا أن يضيقوهما فوجد فيها جدارا يريد أن ينقذ فكامه قال لو شئت لاتخذت عليه أجرا قال هذا فراق بيني وبينك سأنبئك بتعويل ما لم تستطع عليه سبرا أما السفينة فكانت لمساكين يعملون في البحر فعرضت أن عيبها وكان وراهم ملك يأخذ كل سفينة غصبا وأما الغلام فكان بواه مؤمنين فخشينا أن يرهقهما تغيانا وكفرا فعرضنا أن يبدلهما ربهما خيرا منه زكاة وأقرب رحما وأما الجدار فكان لغلامين يتيمين في المدينة وكان تهته كنز لهما وكان عبوهما صالحا فأراد ربك أن يبلغ أشدهما ويستخرج كنزهما رحمة من ربك وما فعلته أن أمري ذلك تعويل ما لم تستطع عليه سبرا صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق الرسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين Let's read the three du'as now اللهم صل على محمد وعال محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا علي يا عظيم يا غفور يا رحيم أنت الرب العظيم الذي ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير وهذا شهر عظمته وكرمته وشرفته وفضلته على الشور وهو الشهر الذي فرضت سيامه عليه وهو شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وجعلت فيه ليلة القدر وجعلتها خيرا من ألف شهر 
فَيَعْذَلْ مَنِّي وَلَا يُمَنُّ عَلَيْكَ مُنَّ عَلَيَّ بِفَكَاكِ رَقَبَتِي مِنَ النَّارِ فِي مَنْ تَوَنُّ عَلَيْهِ وَأَدْخِلْنِ الْجَنَّةِ بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ اللهم صل على محمد وعال محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم أدخل على أهل الكبور السرور اللهم أغني كل فقير اللهم أشبئ كل جائع اللهم أكسو كل عريان اللهم أكذي دين كل مدين اللهم فرج أن كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل أسير اللهم أصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم اشفي كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك اللهم اقضي عنا الدين واغننا من الفقر انك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم رب شهر رمضان الذي انزلت فيه القران وافترضت على عبادك فيه الصيام صل على محمد وعلى محمد وارزقني حج بيتك الحرام في عام هذا وفي كل عام واغفر لي تلك الذنوب الاذام فإنه لا يغفرها غيرك يا رحمن يا علام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Now an extract from Dua Abu Hamza Thimali the companion of Imam Zain al-Abidin from whom he learnt this dua and I love this part فالعاف العاف العاف عاف is not just forgiveness but it's to forgive somebody with love and forgive them so much that you never look back at it again it's basically like walking on the sand you make those footprints and then the sea comes and it rubs them all out it's like putting your sins when you ask for that sort of forgiveness you sort of bury them in the deepest of oceans and it's a sign that says no fishing that's allah so you're saying allah ya allah and and you're saying that think of all the things that you just don't want to see again you don't want to do again sayyidi 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 my master my master my master allahumma shughulna bi dhikrika keep me busy with just remembering you wa idna min sakhatik protect me from your anger wa ajirna min adhabik and save me from your punishment wa rizqna min mawahibik and give me sustenance from your gifts وَأَنْ إِمْ عَلَيْنَا مِنْ فَضْلِكَ And give me the ni'ma, the blessings from your bounties, from your father. Father is extra. But I'd like to today talk a little bit about preparation for Laylatul Qadr. Okay. Every night, 19th, 21st and 23rd, has a great significance. The 19th I normally take as paper, so you've written out everything you want. The 21st is when you want it to be now carved on stone and the 23rd is when it it's like sealed that's it so we've got 3 nights to work on all the way through so what would you, what should you do from today recite surah al-qadr as much as possible yesterday i talked about making two lists a list about aspirations of what you want to do and then something about what you don't want to do like things that you want to take up and you know like i said nothing is impossible make a take a piece of paper fold it in four four things physical mental emotional spiritual this is who i am this is why i want to be now you got to make your dua book ready as well and annotate it so something like this can you see this so this is a start tomorrow we will start annotating our dua books so make sure you have your books ready tomorrow you've downloaded everything from the website and you'll be able to see that in this book this is fatem's book it's beautiful um the squares about the masumina are like that but you might find them like this on the website they're just a different color but it's exactly the same thing so for example the prophet it tells you this is his dad and his mom but it also tells you he was ttc truth trustworthy truthful and compassionate 
and it's something about each one of them so when we're doing the amas and we're reciting bi ya allah bi muhammadin bi aliyin you're thinking you're focusing on those masumi now there's lots of other things we will need to do and we will look at that tomorrow and how we're going to annotate our dua book so inshallah you will get your dua book ready tomorrow you will print this out from the website you may even want to print out the surahs which are like that can you see that's dukhan all the others are like that i'll show them to you so maybe you could print out ankabut and you could print out room and the khan and we will then start to annotate our dua books as well but for today jews of the day our focus is just 16 and as we always do we go towards the whole look the whole 30 ajza and the 114 surah are in that 30 ajza now remember that this Quran was revealed in ayat 6,236 ayat, uh, 77,807 words, but it was compiled into chapters or surah, 114 surah. And the only reason we're doing 30 ajza is that the Quran was divided into 30 equal parts just to make it easy for you and me to be able to recite it in a month. Seven parts if you look at the bottom it says manazil or manzil and it's divided into seven parts so you can finish it in a week okay so we're going to look at just 16 that's going to be our focus being able to journal the quran is to inspire ourselves inspire ourselves to personalize the quran to make sure it talks to us because we want to fall in love with it and before we do anything do wudu recite in arabic seek protection from shaitan audhu billahi in a shaitani regime Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim La ilaha illallah And then the dua Walzam qalbi hifta kitabika kama allamtani Make me commit my heart to your book As you have taught me Make me love you Make me love this book So what we're going to start off is where we left off Now this is Surah Juz 16 And we're going to look at Surah Al-Qahaf And like I told you That Surah Al-Qahaf is in essence tests They're divine tests Where Allah is testing the human being With faith wealth obedience knowledge and authority and we looked at the test of faith with ashab al kahf okay now also there's the story of the gardens which you can look up we don't have the time to look at all of them there's the story of obedience when we looked at where there's a story of shaitan and where he refuses to do such that to prophet adam then there is the story of knowledge and here we have the story of Musa and Khizr. please try and read it maybe inshallah one day we will look over that story again but for today I'd like to look at the story of Dhul Karnain. So if you look at your Qurans, go to your Qurans, I'll go to them. So I'll go to mine. And you can see I've got the story of Dhul Karnain. And where I've got, yes, Alunak and Dhul Karnain, I have circled him in blue. And I've put a sort of a helmet there with two horns. Let me explain. Okay, so let's go. Yes, Alunak and Dhul Karnain. They ask you about Dhul Karnain. Karn means a horn, right? So some say that he used to wear a helmet with two horns and the reason he wore it was because he's known as Cyrus, Cyrus from Persia. So Persia had two kingdoms, so there was the East and the West Kingdom. And he put these kingdoms together and made it into a big thing. So he wore these horns to remind people that we're not just two people, we're combined now, we're into one kingdom. So you could say that. But Karn also means a long time. So maybe he ruled for a long time. Some people say that he used to braid his hair into two braids and he used to curl them up on his head like horns to remind people that he put two two um two empires together. Imam Bakir says that he was not a prophet, but he was a very righteous man. So let's just see what the Quran says about him. Okay, so we're going to have a look and see what the Quran says. So here we have the story. And I'm going to see, I've put it on a post-it note and you could do that to tell a little bit about him. But hopefully you will draw that, that cap there or something. So let's see what Quran says. So if you've got your Quran with you, then maybe you can read with me. Allah says in Ayah 84, Inna makkanna lahu fil ardi. We established him in the earth. Can you see? And made the land easy for him to travel. And I put there, made land easy for him to travel, which means we gave him all these resources, all types of financial help, all sides of help. So he followed a course. Now you'll find that a lot of time in the Quran, for Atba'a Sababa, 85. So he went on a mission. 
He went on a mission and he came to a place where the sun, when the sun was going down. See when he said, when it, when it says Maghrib al Sham, so he went, literally went to two ends of the world. So this was to the east. When the sun goes down, the sun goes down at the east. So he goes to the east. Turn your pages and you will see that he meets these people up there. And these people, he's told, you know what? Allah tells him, you can do what you want with them. So he says, those who are good are okay, but those who are criminals, and I've put there, they, they will be publicly called out and punished. Then again, the second mission. Can you see that? I've got number two there. Thumma atba asababa. Can you see that? Second mission. Now he goes to the west, because he goes to the place where the sun is rising. So he, that's another mission, and he comes there. And when he comes there, exactly the same thing happens. Allah says, Kadalik. He's told those, and he says the same thing. Those who are good, they will be okay. Those who are criminals, they will be punished. So ma'atba sababa. That's the third mission. Can you see that in 92? I've put third mission. Now in this mission, he comes to a place, hatta idha balagha bayna saddaini, where two mountains sort of come together. Wajida min dunihi ma There was a people there. La yakaduna yafkahuna kawla who really could not understand. He couldn't understand the language they couldn't understand. They didn't speak a very good language. So I brought two there. It is between the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea. And they said, Ya Zulkarnit, inna ya ajuja wa ma ajuja yufsiduna fil ard. They said there are these people called ya ajuj and ma ajuj who are really causing destruction. They come during harvest and they take all our crops. Please help us. We will give you some money to help us make a barrier. So they said, you make a sadda. Sadda is a dam. He said, you know what? I will make you something better. He said, I will make a radma. Now, can you see that down here? Radma. So if you want, you can highlight, circle radma and say that that radma is something that fills a gap. So he said, bring me blocks of iron. Here, you can draw blocks of iron here. Bring me blocks of iron. We'll, we'll put some fire to it. And you can see I've put nar, I've highlighted. You can draw fire there. It will melt the iron. And then the gaps we will fill with copper until it becomes a smooth barrier that they won't be able to climb over. And that's what Zulkarnain did. It's a really amazing story. And you can go through that story again and you can draw your bits there. Bits of iron, bits of fire. You can draw the two mountains like I have. And that's where he went. Right, let's look at the next one. So the next ayah we're going to do is this one. Is this the one we're going to do? No, that's the one we're going to do. That's ayah 109. My goodness, it's so beautiful. And you need to know this ayah. It's just amazing. So Allah says, Kullu kana. Say to them, Kullu kana baharu midada. If the sea was midad. Midad is ink. And midad is comes from mud. You know what mud means? To stretch. So why does it say ink is stretched? What is it? Because ink is an extension of your thoughts. See, you get thoughts and then you write them. So the ink takes your thoughts and puts them onto paper. So Allah says, if the ink were the thoughts or the words, لِكَلِمَاتِ Rabbi is the Quran. They're the words of Allah. And they're everything that Allah does. So every order that he gives. So if the words, if the seas were the words of my Rabb, لَنَّفِدَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي the, the ink would finish, the seas would finish, but my words of my Rabb would not finish. وَلَوْ جِئْنَا مِثْلِهِ مَدَدَ Even if you added another sea to it. So basically, and I'll tell you how I've written it. There you go. Can you see? I put that all in blue. I've written here, if the oceans were turned to ink, بَحْر, to extend is midad, then the oceans would run out, even if you brought another ocean like it with the words of my Rabb. So if you think about the Quran, it's his words. Everything, every order of his is his words. Remember we did in Surah Nahar, he, he um, inspired the bee. Can you imagine writing everything he inspired human beings with? All his orders, all his words, my goodness, it would need a billion, trillion, zillion, unfathomable seas to be able to keep his word. So here, unfathomable. His words are just amazing. So hopefully you will, you will do it in blue as well. So now we're going to look at Surah to Maryam. My goodness, it's such a beautiful Surah. So this Surah is literally a detailed story of, say, the Maryam and the birth of Prophet Isa. 
the chapter, say the Maryam, by the way, is the only woman mentioned by name in the Quran. She's mentioned 34 times. And the, and this surah has a rhythmic pattern. Six, it's just got 98 verses, 98 ayat. Out of the 98 ayat, 67 end with the same final sound. And you will see it, we'll talk about it in a minute. And nearly a third of all the times Ar-Rahman comes in the Quran is in this chapter. It's in this surah. Okay, so it's really, really an amazing surah. So let me just show you uh, my Quran. So again, I've cut it out. See, 67 ending an. You'll see it. You'll, you'll see how you read it, right? So when you read it, khafiya, shaqiya, waliya. It's a, it's a rhythmic sound. It's really amazing. So I've cut it out from the website. I put it in here. And I put trust in Allah. Her trust in Allah was just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So let's look at it. We're going to start off. We'll start off with the first line, which is Qaf ha ya ain sad. That's how it starts. That's Wuful Muqatti'at. And I will talk about it as well. Now let's look at the second ayah. Allah says, Dhikru rahmati rabbika abdahu zakariya. There's a mention of the mercy of your Rabb on his abd zakariya. So let me show you where I am here. Can you see? So what did he do? Is nada rabbuhu nida an kafiya when he called upon his rab in a voice that was nida is 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 um dua is silent nida is loud but he called that voice but kafiya kafiya means he called out sort of quietly secretly he said qala ya rabbi he said oh my rab Inni wahanal adhmu, my bones have become so weak. Washta'ala ra'su shayba, and my head is full of old, I've become old. Walam akum bidu'ai karabbi shakiyab. I know one thing. My du'as, I will never, ever, ever been unfortunate in my du'as. That's what he says. When he says my head is on fire, he means old age, you know, it's like I I can't retrieve my youth now, my youth is burnt out. But he says Shaqiyya, and this is in the sermon of the Prophet. Remember we had the one who is the most unfortunate is the one who is not forgiven. And then he says in Ayah 5, he says, I look around me and I can't find anybody who will take my legacy and my wife hasn't got any children yet. And I want somebody in Ayah 6, he says, who will inherit me and inherit the children of Yaqub. Now this is the first of Muharram and Zakaria is going to check on Sayyidah Maryam, okay? So he goes to check on Sayyidah Maryam, and you know what happens? And if you look at Surah number 3, we talked about this, if you remember. I'll go back to Zakaria here. Surah number 3, Ayah 37, he goes to check on her, and they've got fruits out of season. This is Ayah 37. Go back to your Quran and you will see it. So he says, fruit out of season, and he says, where is this from? Where is this from? She said, in the love. This is from Allah. And there and then, Ayah 38, Surah Tuala Imran, you can write it here if you want, just to make sure that you remember where he's doing the dua. So, if I go back again to my surah, here, can you see where he says, it's never be unsuccessful? You can write here, and as I have done, can you see? 3, 37 and 38. So he's referring to there, there and then, Hunalika da'a Zakaria. There and then, Dua Zakaria does Dua. What does he say? Qala Rabbi habli min ladunka dhurriyatan. My Rabb, give me good children. Inna ka samia dua. You hear Dua. So you could, when you pray, say, Ya Allah, I give you the wasila of Zakaria. You heard him. So hear me as well. Okay? Right. Now what are we going to do? Now we're going to talk about Sayyidah Maryam. So shall we go to her? So I'd like you to go to Ayah 29 and 30, okay? So Ayah 29 and 30 are on the next page, and I'd like you to go there. So what happens? Let's talk about Sayyidah Maryam. So there's Sayyidah Maryam. She's got her baby in her arms, right? And she goes towards her town people. And she goes to her town people, and they said, Whose baby is that? She doesn't say anything. They're saying, What have you done? You're not even married, and you have a baby. Can you see that? They can, she comes to the people talking here, 27. Now we're going to look at 29. This is her trust in Allah. And here I write trust in big writing. Okay? So what does she do? She points to the baby. 
Kalu, the people say, Kaifa nukallimu man kana fil mahdi sabiya? How can we talk to someone who is in a cradle? How can we talk to a baby in a cradle? How can we do that? So I'll show you what I've done while I'm talking to you. I've drawn a cradle. How do you talk to a baby in the cradle? In other words, how do we talk to a baby in your arms? Suddenly the baby spoke. Prophet Isa said, Qala, inni abdullah. Indeed, I am the servant of Allah. Atani al-kitabi. He has given me the book. Wa ja'alani nabiya. And he has made me a prophet. Isn't it amazing? So you could write here. Can you see? You can write here. Prophet Isa as a baby and you know he spoke from my mama's arms and this was the trust she had in Allah that the baby would speak so I'd like you to highlight that put trust you could um, color it if you want in whatever you want so I would maybe do it in green and her trust I don't like these were the townspeople, so I'm not going to color that in green. I'm going to color them in brown because they weren't being very nice at all. Like that, see? So you could do the same thing too. All right, so what's the next verse? Now we're going to go to Surah Taha. Okay, so if you turn your pages, I'll turn my Quran so you can see. This is Surah Taha. And Surah Taha is dedicated to Prophet Musa. So at the top I've written, dedicated to Musa in perseverance. Taha is also a name of the Prophet. Steadfastness means your perseverance means you're just in the face of insults, you're really just staying there. It also talks about establishing Salah. So what are we going to look at? Now any surah, let me go back, any surah that starts with Ta, can you see that? Always talks about the snake of Prophet Musa. It's amazing. Let me show you. So if you wrote a Ta, and you wrote it like that, a bit like that. It looks like a snake, doesn't it? All the surahs that start with Ta, Ta Sin, Ta Sin Mim, Ta Ha, all talk about the snake of Musa. And you can write that down so that's something you, you know. Okay. So we're going to look today at Ayah 20 and 22. Now you all know this. We've talked about it. But we'll go back again. And you know what snake was it, wasn't it? So let's look at Ayah 20. So he threw his, his staff and my goodness, it became a snake running. Now there are three words for snake in Arabic that's given, in the Quran rather, not even Arabic, I'm going to talk about the Quran. There are three words for a snake. One is Thu'ban, Thu'ban means it's large. The other one is Hayya, which is scary, it's got fangs showing. And then the other one is Jan. Jan means it's quick. Okay, so three words. Here, the word uses hayya, which is a snake that is scary. Okay, so Allah is telling him, throw down your staff. Yeah, look, let's have a look at the conversation. He has a conversation in Allah. Allah is saying, what is in your right hand? He said, this is my staff. I recline on it. Allah says, cast it down, O Musa. And so he cast it down and it became a snake. Can you see my snake that I've stuck in there? Yeah, okay. So what else is there? Press your hand, take your hand, and press your hand under your armpit, in, in, in your side, and it will come out white, like it will turn into a light bulb without any fault. Can you imagine? That's why you can see the light coming out of the hand. So that's what we will do in your Quran. You will draw here. Can you see? So there's a light. I will draw a hand there. And I could use yellow to color it in because it's like a light bulb, it's shiny, can you see? So you could do that too. And you know about Prophet Musa then. Now, oh my goodness, I love this. This is the dua of Prophet Musa. So Allah tells him, you have to go to Fir'aun. Can you see that? He says to him here, go to Fir'aun, Ayah 24. ila Fir'aun, innahu tagha. Because he has crossed all his limits. Now, this is a dua you need to learn all the time. Every time you want to say something, every time you want to do something, read this dua. Kala rabbi shrahli sadri. Oh, my rab. Now, do means expand my breast for me. It means give me confidence. Wa yassirli amri. Make me in tune with this task that you've given me. Wahlul uqdatam min lisani. 
he had a stutter. Prophet Musa had a stutter. So he's saying, loosen the knot in my tongue. If I get nervous, I may not be able to say the right thing. Yafqahu qawli. Make my speech clear. Speaking is to ensure that the person understands. So you're saying, so that, waj, so that, yafqahu qawli, so that they may understand what I'm trying to say. Now, that's what we want to do. And that's the dua that we want to understand. Okay? Yeah, back to my Quran. So you're highlighting it in the yellow. Rabbi Shrahli Sadri, Wayasirli Amri, Wahlul Uktatam Milisani, Yafkahu Kauli. You gotta highlight that. Okay. The next one we're gonna highlight is beautiful. Now this is ayah 114, and many, many of you know this ayah because you recite it all the time. So what do you say? Now I'm only gonna go to the last bit. Don't worry about the top bit. Only the bit Wakurur Rabbi Zidni Ilma and Rab increase. Let me show you in my Quran so you can see down here. Can you see that? Wakur Rabbi Zidni Ilma. Now what does that mean? It doesn't mean Ya Allah, give me more knowledge, make me an encyclopedia, or make me a search engine like Google. No, 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 no. It means increase me in knowledge he doesn't say and i've written it here he doesn't say zid ilmi increase my knowledge in other words make me know a lot of facts no no nothing like that he he says make when you do dua you're saying enhance me make me a better human being make me a better believer through the knowledge i know did it change my belief my my behaviors this knowledge of mine Help me to be a better human being and a better believer, a better mu'min. That's what Rabbi Zidni ilmi, ilma, ilma means. So read it with me. Rabbi Zidni Ilma. It is an absolutely phenomenal verse. In every kunut, if you say, make knowledge a means for me to be a better person. And that's in essence what this is about. So inshallah, you will have... Um, you will have um, journaled your Qurans at least this much. Inshallah, we will continue tomorrow. But for today, we will end with the Surah Al Fatiha with the dua for protection and the ziyarah of Abu, Abu Abdullah. So recite with me. Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Malik Yomitin. Iyaka Nabudu wa Iyaka Nastain. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Close your eyes. Ask Allah to give us the love through the marwamin, especially those of your family. Pray for those who are ill and those who are in trouble. The pandemic is really, really bad in places like India. Please pray for them, and please pray for those who are going through so much trouble because of it. لي خمسة أطفي بها حر الوباء الحاتمة المستفى والمرتضى وأبناهما والفاتمة السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر لحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم في أمان الله كريم إن شاء الله see you tomorrow again at the same time